Hey everyone, I'm Mabel. Um, so this is the explanation video behind the Sims 4 Traits Challenge that we are doing a series on. Uh, I'm going to be going over sort of an overview on what the challenge is and how it works. So basically, many of you may know that there are reward traits to be gotten in the Sims 4. These reward traits are only available through gameplay. You cannot generate a sim with them without any sort of cheating. These traits can be usually found in the reward store. If we open that up here, you can see in here traits. There's always welcome, cold acclimation, great storyteller, all sorts of things. And many mods add their own, but these ones here are the defaults, right? And they, they can be very powerful too, right? Like, never weary sims never need sleep. However, not everyone is aware that there are reward traits that you also can't buy. So, there's the reward traits that come from completing aspirations, right? So if we look in here, you get the reward trait handy from completing the nerd brain aspiration. And that allows you to instantly fix and upgrade any object, right? And so that reward trait can only happen if you complete this aspiration here. In addition to that, however, there are reward traits that you cannot get on a sim that you've built in Create a Sim. So in the case of this sim here, this is a default EA provided sim, right? This sim here, uh, her name is uh, Minerva Charm. You can see she actually begins with a reward trait that you would not be able to give a sim that you created. This one here, the strong bloodline trait, is from the Realm of Magic uh, pack here. And the uh, strong bloodline trait comes only from being the biological child of a sim who had the weak bloodline trait. And that trait only comes from being the biological child of a sim who had no bloodline trait but was a spellcaster. So in this, she gets generated with strong bloodline. But you can't do that. So you could start with her or, you know, any of these others here. So basically, there are traits which, no matter what you do, without cheating, you cannot create a sim in the initial create a sim, right? You can't go to manage worlds here and make a new household and have a sim who will be able to have the ancient bloodline trait, right? So if we go and we create a new household and move in, there's no way that this sim can ever, ever have the weak, strong, or ancient bloodline traits because she was generated without them. So in a challenge where we're not going to be cheating, there's only one way to get every reward trait on one sim, and that is through four different generations. We could skip a generation or two, however there's really no real need to do that because our initial sim cannot have any of the bloodline traits. So at best, that sim could get us a head start by having a biological child with a pre-made sim who does come with one of those bloodline traits. However, there are two others that I have not yet discussed, and they are Sulani Mana and Father Winter's Baby. So Father Winter's Baby is actually from if we go in here, you need to be the direct descendant of Father Winter himself. In the uh, initial world, if nothing's been done to Father Winter, this man is Clement, and he is absolutely interactable and you can have a baby with him. You can also add him to the household and you'll see that you actually get a fair amount of money from doing that. He also comes with some fantastic uh, uh, skills. However, as soon as he is added to a household, he actually loses the hidden trait Father Winter, which causes him to no longer be able to have kids who have Father Winter's baby as a trait. 
So it is very tricky to get that going um, when we are making our own, uh, when we are doing this challenge, basically, we're going to actually have to have a kid confirmed having Father Winter's baby and available to be our heir before we could ever add him to the household. And we will want to do that chiefly because of the money, uh, but also because he is a fantastic parent. And that's going to help us a lot. However, the Father, the Father Winter's baby trait, as far as I know, is very, very, very rare to ever pass along to a uh, grandchild of Father Winter, which means that we actually need to have Father Winter be the last parent, right? So the Sim we're going to play as in this challenge, who's going to get every single reward trait, is going to need to be the child of Father Winter himself. To have Sulani Mana, then, the grandparent has to have been able to um, have a biological child with an island elemental, and that is from Sulani. That is actually, if you generate a sim with Child of the Islands, they're actually able to summon island elementals as one of their actions. And when they do that, uh, they basically, the, the mechanic is that they then get judged based on how well they represent the culture of Sulani. However, if you were to befriend one of those island elementals and uh, manage to get them to join the household, which you need to get to nearly maximum friendship with this sim before they disappear, or find a way to get them back onto your lot because they are a ghost, uh, that's going to allow you to add them to your household, and then you can actually revive them using Ambrosia. Ambrosia is a very powerful item in The Sims 4, which is actually uh, made by your Sims through a very involved process. To unlock the recipe for Ambrosia, you need to have level 10 cooking and level 10 gourmet cooking. In addition to that, your sim needs to have access to a death flower, an angelfish, and a potion of youth. Now, a potion of youth comes from, uh, if we go in here, I can show you, and here it is. So, for 1,500 satisfaction points, you can get the potion of youth. That'll just go into your inventory. It never spoils, neither does Ambrosia. In addition to the potion of youth, and the angelfish, you need the death flower. And a death flower is a very involved process. In order to get a death flower, you need to have cherry, apple, lily, and snapdragon. Grafting a cherry and an apple together makes a pomegranate. Grafting a lily and a snapdragon together makes an orchid. Grafting an orchid and a pomegranate together makes a death flower. To be able to graft plants together, your sim needs to have a level 5 gardening skill. So, in addition to finding all of those base plants and growing them to maturity and harvesting, you also need to get a level 5 gardening skill in order to even create the hybrid plants then grow those hybrid plants, and then harvest the hybrid product, grow that hybrid product, make a new hybrid by grafting both of those hybrid products together. Now you have a hybrid plant, which when it grows, you'll be able to harvest death flowers from it. So it is a very lengthy, very involved process. However, You'll notice that once death flowers are growing on your lot, they'll continue to grow and you can continue to harvest them. Death flowers are fantastic items on their own. You can use them to plead for your sim's life from death. You can also continue to use them along with the angelfish and another potion of youth anytime you want to create another ambrosia. So if you want to revive ghosts in The Sims 4, 
you can really start creating sort of an assembly line for that without too much more work. Really, the initial work is just to get access to making ambrosia, and from then on, it's fairly easy. So, the ambrosia is used only in this run, only so that we can revive one of the island elementals and have a biological child with that island elemental. That will allow us to have a sim who begins with Sulani Mana. Sulani Mana is a reward trait which allows you to, uh, first of all, every so often, it has a cooldown, you can go to a plant that's growing and you can use the Gift of Sulani to improve its quality by one entire tier, which is absolutely fantastic. But in addition to that, you can also call down the fireballs, uh, which are part of the sort of volcanic eruption slot trait. You can call those down on command. They can start fires while they're hot, but when they're cooled, they provide resources. It's kind of neat, kind of fun. So the route we're going to take in this is we are going to have an initial sim who we are going to be generating largely at random. And we are going to have that sim gain level 10 cooking, level 10 gourmet cooking, level 5 gardening, and also level 10 painting. And the reason for the level 10 painting is because we're actually going to be going through the uh, painter extraordinaire aspiration here. If we look in here, you know. The reason for that is because we need to get reward points, we need to get these lifetime satisfaction points in order to afford getting the Potion of Youth. We need 1500 for that. So we want to have money and we also want to have a Potion of Youth at the end of this. Painter Extraordinaire is a fantastic way to do that very, very quickly. So that is the initial route. We are also, in that time, going to be trying to collect a cherry, an apple, a lily, a snapdragon, and an angelfish. This sim will also need to become a spellcaster. Then, this sim will have a biological child with really any other sim. It won't matter. And we're going to need to keep doing that until we get a biological child who has weak bloodline, was born a spellcaster, and also was assigned female at birth. Now, we don't necessarily need to have uh, to have them born as a spellcaster. As soon as they are old enough to be a spellcaster, which I believe is teen, uh, they can go to the realm of magic and immediately just request spellcasting, and they won't even need to do the quest, the, the, the orbs that you have to collect, the moats, sorry. However, in this challenge, I've found that it's a lot more fun if the world changes around you and if these families are big. You know, we're going through four different generations, and I really do enjoy having a larger family with more sims and more things going on. And so as part of that, I want to sort of narrow down who we are going to consider a valid heir. So. In my experience, the island elementals have always been male, and so they always generate as being able to impregnate but not being able to become pregnant. So because of this, we do need to have a, uh, an heir who is assigned female at birth in order to have a biological child with the island elemental. That's going to be the same thing in the third generation when we need a sim who will be able to have a biological child with Father Winter, who is assigned male at birth in this game, uh, is able to get other sims pregnant, is not able to get pregnant himself. So biological child with Father Winter means that we do need to have a sim who is assigned female at birth as our third generation heir, which means that our second and third generation heirs are going to have to be female at birth and also are going to have to have all of the traits that we're looking for. So second generation, like we said, just needs to be a spellcaster, uh, just needs to have weak bloodline, and just needs to be assigned female at birth. Third generation does need to have Sulani Mana, is assigned female at birth, will have 
strong bloodline, and will need to be a spellcaster. So that is four different criteria. And then the fourth generation, really the only two things we're really going to be looking for are um, child uh, or Father Winter's Baby and also Ancient Bloodline. Besides that, there are no actual requirements for the final generation, because like we said, we can just go ahead and become a spellcaster uh, just from having that bloodline. So I don't know if anybody else has made a challenge like this in the past. I did look for it. I didn't find anyone else uh, having made this challenge before, or at least having done this challenge before. I also didn't find any other challenges uh, with the same name as this, the, the Every Trait Challenge. If this idea is not new, then that doesn't really matter. We're still just going to have fun. We're going to have a very uh, long playthrough here. We're going to really get to know these Sims and this world, and we're going to watch this world grow and develop. Uh, I was originally planning to do this completely modless. However, I did decide that I wanted to have MC Command Center. As you can see in here, I am running that. An MC Command Center is going to allow us to have the world grow and develop in ways that it normally wouldn't in The Sims 4. That's going to help us to just sort of feel a little bit more like this world is really alive. We're going to see uh, different pre-made Sims um, marrying each other, having children. Uh, those children will grow up, get jobs, um, move to different places. The world is going to start feeling a lot more full, a lot more interesting, and we'll actually see our own like family members, you know, moving out. Uh, we'll have to move them out manually, but they'll move out and then we'll check back in and maybe they'll have a spouse, maybe they'll have kids, and it'll be very interesting to to have a sim who has, you know, cousins nieces and nephews, all sorts of things like that, I think makes this game feel a lot more real, uh, helps us get a lot more attached to everybody in this, in this run. And by the end of it, I hope, you know, that we can look back on, on these different generations and, you know, almost kind of like miss them, you know? look back on them and say, oh yeah, I remember the the second generation there. I remember, you know, who who knows about their about their personalities, but we're gonna really try to characterize them. It's gonna be difficult on the first generation. It's gonna be a lot of like me sort of forcing the first generation person to, you know, go in and paint for her whole entire life and all that. And so we're going to really not be able to have too much of a connection to the original sim. But as we go forward, the structure of this is going to become a lot more loose. We're going to be able to have a lot more fun and really start to care about these generations, really start to care about them as people, develop their stories. Uh, we're going to maybe even like make up details about them, make up a story behind some of these sims, you know, maybe the, the the burnout of the family, the the family disappointment, right? Or the the nerd, or the put upon oldest child. You know, these sorts of things that really characterize these Sims as humans, as people who have interesting and varied lives. And then, of course, by the end of it, we are going to have a Sim who is basically born with superpowers. Uh, in addition to that, we're going to have to get the reward traits that do come from, I'm going to show you in here, um, from parenthood. We have the character values here. You can see there's manners, responsibility, emotional control, empathy, and conflict resolution. And you can see in here, actually, um, the traits that you can get from those. So we will also have a sim who our final generation sim is going to have to have the perfect childhood so that they end up with mediator, compassionate, responsible, emotional control, and good manners. Now you can see that you actually do get a reward trait of sorts if you have like bad manners, right? However, a rule that we're going to be putting in this 
challenge is that if there are traits which are mutually exclusive or which sort of like upgrade in tiers like the bloodline traits, the only one that counts for it is whatever the best version of it is. So good manners, not bad manners. Ancient bloodline, not strong or weak bloodline. That way we always have a, a uh, an objective goal in this, right? There is a best form of every trait, and that's what we need to get. That also avoids any of the uh, mutually exclusive traits, since, you know, if we have good manners, we do not have bad manners, which would mean that it would be impossible to have both of those traits. So in this case, we are saying only the good version counts. Bad manners wouldn't even count if we had it, right? So this run is going to take a very, very, very long time. I think possibly what we may look into doing is breaking this into seasons, and those seasons are going to be each one of these generations. There's going to be a lot of content that gets, you know, either skipped over because it's just boring or grindy or we're just wasting time. Um, but I'm going to try to keep things interesting. We are going to get into moments where, you know, we've raised a kid before and it stops being new content. I'm trying not to skip over that sort of thing. Maybe we'll just sort of, you know, talk, have some fun, tell stories or whatever while we're going through those. Uh, keep things interesting that way since, you know, the content is going to sometimes drag in this. But that's just a reality of it, right? Anyway, I think I've explained the majority of this uh, run, what we're doing, why we're doing it, all that sort of stuff. So in the next episode, the very first episode, we are going to be generating our first sim and going from there. I hope you guys enjoy this series. Let me know um, if, you know, the style of the content could be improved at all. You know, let me know if there's if you want to watch my sim sit there and paint instead of me, you know, fast forwarding through it. I'm initially going to be just fast forwarding through it. But please, you know, keep me up to date on what you want to see and how you want these episodes to be structured. And we're going to go from there. This is going to take a very long time. We're going to get to know each other very well. And we're going to tell a story together. <laughs>